All right, so we're gonna go over this uh, new investment calculator that I made. So uh, the first underlying assumption is stocks don't successively go down. So normally, like with a coin flip, you have a straight probability um, of 50% either outcome. But here the probability adjusts based on the price movement. You can think like, if someone in the company announced they were selling off their stock and the stock price dropped 20% in one day, what would be the probability that it would drop another 20% the next day or the next time interval? And the probability decreases because companies have certain aspects like their balance sheets, their cash flow, their infrastructure that gives them some innate value. Plus you have like puts and call contracts, well, namely the puts, so the price drops, the puts exit, they buy up stocks, they keep the price from dropping lower. Um, new investors come in at the more attractive price. So yeah, prices don't really generally move successively, successively in the same direction. So that's why we're using a sigmoid curve. Um, I tested like dozens of different strategies um one of the best strategies was the buy no matter what and hold you know no matter what you just whatever your income is to invest with you buy it and you put it in um so that is definitely a viable strategy we can see for other strategies um this is the scared money strategy Basically, you lost money, um, you take some of your investment out. Um, and that was one of the lowest performers, so don't take your money out because you're losing money. Um, conversely, there was like the uh, miss the boat strategy that was poor. poor. Um, but yeah, definitely the best strategy was if the price seemed overpriced you invest um, or, or no the price is overpriced you take your money out and, and reap some of your profits to increase your balance if it's underpriced you would put more in now this requires something some knowledge of the uh, stock but then uh, yeah other than that though buy and hold definitely dollar cost average in is very powerful but what I did find was uh, like profit reaping was not very successful without some sort of underlying principle so just because you made money and you have some sort of cost basis doesn't mean you take your money out and unless if you need it you're losing money over time so now we move on to the meat of it i'm investing in the schwab high dividend fund so we just get that we display out the price we use this Python package to do that. And then we uh, we import the data, download it from a range from three years ago ago to today. I tried messing around with the intervals, but uh, you get not a number error, so I just set that to one day, and I'm I modify the intervals if I need to, doing like averaging myself. Um, so you download that, then. I do a, a log adjustment and I, you can see here I print out the average of the uh, log and this is the adjusted close which makes a little bit more sense for the dividend um, stocks because this takes into account what the dividend announcement was and subtracts that out basically. Um, there's some other more complicated features in there but the adjusted close is a better metric in my opinion of the, the price. So yeah, then we see the last adjusted close was 428, that's a log based. Um, and then we rescale that and we say it's 72.69, but the expected price was 77. So right now we're in the case where the stock is undervalued. Um, yeah. And we do some probability of it going up or down based on the sigmoid, uh, normal sigmoid. 
um, and we see it's uh, a 51 percent chance that it goes up 48 that it goes down that's not hard numbers that's just a very rough indicator you could get a better approximation uh, doing some sort of histographical lookup table or something but that's what I'm doing here um, yeah and this doesn't really uh, affect the calculations these are just uh, like useful indicators but this doesn't go into our strategy so yeah then we see the the standard deviation of the log uh, price movement of the adjusted uh, for daily is 1.2 for monthly it's a little bit more stable less deviation but 1.07 um, you do those as like price calculations and I think that's like uh, seven dollars or something I should probably print that out uh, here's the real meat though so I'm starting with 60 shares and an income monthly of 1500 to invest and so I do some calculations and I see if I lost a losing streak number of times three times which gives me down to like 10% uh, odds and that's that's fine because in stocks unlike traditional martingales so we have the different function uh, it's not a constant odds it's a with memory um, sigmoidal curve but with stocks also you never bust you never lose money until you realize losses so if your investment is down that's fine if you assume that it will come back up to that number eventually you can just sit on the the loss and the principle kicks in it just kicks in whenever it starts going up from your lowest point where you had no money left to invest right and with the income, there's another feature here that the price just keeps going down and you bust it out. You're still investing income down there, so you still reap some profits. So this strategy is pretty robust and not like a traditional gambling strategy. Um, yeah, so, so we put our income, we simulate the loss, and then we save that off. Um, if we're going to... Uh, yeah, and then we load it on other times. So you set this to true um, the first time, you put your numbers in, and then the next time it'll just load that. And then down here, you save it off if, you, if you're confident in the results. So our basic strategy, we take the start, we take the value of our account, and we compare that to uh, what would the value be if the price was fairly balanced that is um, this calculation where we take the average and then we take the daily returns we run the daily returns based off of the average we divide that by two because our time period is in half um, because that's the midpoint um, average basically uh, these aren't the most confident metrics you can use but that's what this is doing and then yeah it just runs the return based on the average and says at this time you should have had this much so that's what this metric is and then if we have some profits we reap some profits out now I'll talk about the balance here um, but if we're at a loss we try to recover our loss based on if the price moved one standard deviation um, which is reasonable and it moved in our favor how how, uh, how much will we need to recover our losses and we put that much in and we don't obviously invest if we don't have the balance to invest but then there's another we recalculate our uh, target balance here um, but the balance is basically that three loss thing and if our balance is greater than our target balance which is the risk that we can assume on our account uh, such that we have enough money to recoup our losses in times of decline we uh, take out the extra balance and we reinvest that because we only need this much so you really want as much money as you can have in the market at a time which is why I settled on the uh, three successive losses 
Um, five would give you a 1% chance of never tapping out. You always make money, but the amount of money that you make is less because you had less money in there. So in a particularly bad uh, down market, yes, you would uh, saturate your three months down, um, but yeah, that that's basically a trade-off there to get the maximum returns. So you can see I start out with this balance, that's how much I can have for a risk on my account, which is like 5000 or something, or 4000 um, So it's pretty, pretty decent at this point because it's based on how much you're putting in in your, your income and whatnot. Um, then we can see after we invest more, we have a higher target balance because we need more money to recoup our losses, but we still end with a decent balance. It tells you how many shares to buy for the month and the total to invest. So that's your 1500 income plus whatever you took out of your account, which is like 300. And then you end up there 359 and you end up with this. And then this says how much should your account be totaled after you invest. And then you save off the data. You repeat this every month. You just go to runtime, run all, and you make sure that you have the proper switches um, you're not seeding after the first time, but you do on the first, and you save, um, yeah, after after you get your calculations and you're like, yep, I can afford 24 shares, um, my balance is fine, then you save it. You can also seed the, the uh, thing at any time if your income changes, you change your income, if, you're, if you sold off some shares, you change that, if um, you want to change your balance, you change your balance. Um, for the balance though, you would have to change it. This will tell you how much you should have. Um, but if you have less than that, you can change that. You could even, you could change it right here. Instead of saying save balance is balance, you just say whatever your actual balance is and just run only the cell. But that's basically how this strategy works. Um, I tested it. It performs marginally, very marginally better than the strategy of just buy it, whatever the price is, all of the income, and hold it forever. So, yes. But it performs decently better than in a, a similar strategy that says, I want to have some money off to the side. You know, I, need, I have some expenses, some months I might not have as much uh, coming in, you know. And with some balance off to the side, it performs decently better. Um, I think that it was 8,500 8, versus 7,100 or something. And that's with a, uh, a starting balance of 1,000 uh, over the course of 10 years. So that's a pretty decent chunk of growth there. But that's the entire strategy. I'll link this uh, notebook as view only in the comments and uh, see you all in the next video.